Hello and welcome to the Magical Midlife Podcast, where you get a refreshing, uplifting and optimistic perspective on life in your 40s and 50s. I'm your host, Lindsay DeSwart, and I'm delighted that you've joined us here today. So let's jump right in. Hi, thanks for listening to the show today. Today's guest is Dr. Laura Foster, who is a personal coach to women and she leads women's retreats and really helps women to be soul inspired. And her name is the Soul Inspired Girl. So I think you're going to love what she has to say. We talk about women going on retreats, the benefit of women being together, and also how we grow into ourselves and our wisdom. So I think you're going to be really inspired by today's show. So sit back, just enjoy the show, and let us know what you think afterwards. Okay. So, hey, Laura, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Lindsay. I'm so happy to be here today. Fantastic. Well, Laura, I'm delighted that we managed to make this work. And it's funny because we used to live so close to each other. And yet this is the first time we're probably sitting in proper conversation when you are on the other side of Canada now. You sometimes have to do that. You have to move away to come together with women. (laughs) I guess that's how we needed to meet, but uh, it's true. Right before the call, as we were kind of connecting, we were realizing I already knew our lives had been woven together. But when I look back now, I just really realize how many times our paths have crossed. So it just seems like the right time to be in conversation today. I know. Fantastic. And you're quite new on your podcasting journey, which we'll come to. Oh yeah. I'm new. Yeah. Still wet behind the ears completely. (laughs) Three episodes in. (laughs) Yay, go with that. I love that. Excellent. So first of all, let's rewind it a little bit. Laura, can you just introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself because there are so many different facets to the beautiful work that you do and who you are. Mm, For sure. Thank you. Thanks for asking that question. Um, Yeah, I mean, where do I start? I think the easiest place to start would be to say um, that I'm a mom. I have two boys. I'm in a blended family of six with my partner. We live in Kelowna, British Columbia, and I'm a personal leadership coach to women. I also run a program called Roots in the Sisterhood. Uh, It's a group collective program. And I do retreats. I'm a yoga teacher. I'm just like one of those women who always has a craft coffee in her hand and is like looking for the trail or the adventure, that kind of thing. Uh, But where I originally started was I was a chiropractor for so many years. And back when I lived in the same town as you, that's what I did. Almost 25 years as a full-time chiropractor, I had a clinic in Ontario, Canada. And in that space for all of those years, uh, it was really such a massive expression of who I was at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in practice and I absolutely loved it. And I had this amazing team of women that worked with me and for me. And it really was such a foundational piece of who I was for so many years. And then at some point, I can't even tell you when, there was a shift or a change. All of a sudden, you know, the thing that I had so wanted to do that I created out of nothing, really, the, the passion project was no longer mind a champion. So I took a massive turn in what I was doing in the world. I had already been doing retreats. I had already been coaching chiropractors. I'd already been hosting workshops for women. I was already doing a lot of these pieces of the work in the work that I was doing, but I just took that bold move back in February of 2019. And I sold my clinic to one of my associates, one of my very best friends in practice, Uh, and made that transition. She became clinic owner, clinic director. I became the associate. uh, And I continued to work in that capacity till December of 2019. I just felt this complete pull and shift. And now that I look back, like we often can do, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you look back in time and you think, why do I need to leave right now? You know, I just... I wanted to stay for a couple of years. It was kind of the loose intention. And then all of a sudden, I just couldn't ignore what I was feeling. And I retired my, you know, from practice in December of 2019. 
you know, took a trip to Spain in December or January of 2020, did my yoga teacher training. It was marvelous, came back. And, you know, I've just been on this journey ever since, picked the family up, you know, just a small thing to do in yeah. May at the beginning of a pandemic, moved across Canada. And, you know, we've been, I've been out here really just digging in and rooting into the work that I'm doing in the world right now. And it's, you know, it's been quite, I mean, obviously it's been quite a journey. So that's where I am right now. I'm, I've been coaching women, showing up in programs, um, really just, you know, providing the level of support and so on that kind of this time right now is calling for. Mm, Absolutely. Yeah. So let's wind it back a little bit because you were working, well, you had your own chiropractic practice for 25 years, did you say? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. As you matured through that, because obviously 25 years to be doing the same thing for um, for a community is yeah. a lot of time and you learn a lot about yourself. So how did you develop within that 25 years? Mm, great question. I, I have thought about this a lot mm-hmm. and really looked back at that time questioning and wondering what all those pieces were and who I became as I worked myself through that. And I, one of the ways that I really think about it is that that practice, that business, that platform, that foundation helped raise me in such Mm -hmm. a funny way. You know, I started in my mid twenties as a chiropractor I definitely was not the same woman when I exited the practice. Um, (laughs) And nor should you be 25 years later. (laughs) Thank goodness I wasn't. But in that time, you know, I got married, I got divorced, I had two children, I did crazy things. I, you know, I did several long distance Ironman triathlons. I, I, I really, so many aspects of myself, I just sort of, unlearned, unbecame as I was sort of reaching for the next thing that I was doing partway through it all, you know, really in my late thirties, early forties, there was a point in time when I really realized that the things that were working in my life were working great. Like my practice had always been my sweet spot. I was really, truly authentically myself at the very core of my being, but there were a couple of places in my life that although my life was amazing from the mm-hmm. perspective of it was more than I ever imagined for myself. Like if when I think back and you're a girl who's, who is growing up, you can't help but anticipate or look forward in your life. And in my, my life really was more than I had ever expected of myself. Cool. And what was, yeah, cool. But what was hard about that was just this very aspect where there was a few things in my life that so weren't me. And I wondered how I had created that for myself. You know, how had I been what I thought was conscious, um, aware, grounded? And, you know, it's not like I went through life with blinders on, but there was this deep knowing that the things that were working were working well. And the things that weren't, I was bumping into and bumping into and bumping into. And, you know, this did coincide with, the, you know, the end of my marriage, but I don't blame it on that. It just was another aspect of really getting to uncover who I was. And mm-hmm. so I, I, I think about that as the time when I really broke down and, you know, let things break away and fall away. And it was the beginning of a really big transformative time in my life, several years, you know, going forward from that point where I just let everything fall away. You know, everything Mm. got put on the table, all the questions, liberating, scary as hell, Lindsay, let me tell you, it was, it was not easy. And I felt shame actually, in some ways, because Mm. I had a life that I know because they, people said it to me would look in on. And I know we're not supposed to care about what other people think, but people lovingly will share with you. And when you're vulnerable, which I was at that time, it was difficult to hear what other people perceived because it just added on the layer of stress as to why I should be feeling bad for this, you know, this breaking down and this changing and, you know, the way I was putting my life back together. Mm -hmm. And although I know for a fact that, that a lot of people never knew this was going on in my life at that time, my closest friends, my family, 
my coworkers, those kinds of things. But, you know, we, we often are very private when mm. we're in those really, I don't know, vulnerable spots. I was going to say, there's really tough spots. They're tough spots. They are tough spots. I mean, they're the fertile ground for almost every awesome thing that can come from it. They certainly were for me. I would do it again. Please don't ask me to, but if I had to, <laughs> just to get, you know, to get back to this place, I'd do it. I would, yeah. but, but let me tell you, yeah, I, and, and I think that happens maybe it's not a divorce. Maybe it's not a shifting, a changing of the, of the things that went on in my life. But I think, you know, as humans, we've all had that experience where yeah. you just awaken and maybe it's right now because there's a lot of collective awakening, yes. awakening to the things that are working in your life and awakening to the things that aren't. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's painful and it's yeah. great. And yes. it's not, it's not great. And it's, you know, it's all those things. Yeah. It's all of the emotions all together. But that means I always talk about the sort of the swing of the pendulum where you've got the most fantastic times, right? The flip side of it, you've got the most difficult times. And we yeah. could all kind of walk in that gray zone of being in the middle. But that means you miss out on the extremely good times as well as the extremely bad times or tough times, shall we say. Yeah. And I, I also think that we have a tendency to not be true to ourselves when we find that 50 shades of beige place, right? Yeah. Like where, we're, where, we're, <laughs> right. where we're trying not to bump into any of the highs or the lows, or maybe it's not that we're not trying to bump into the highs. We're just trying to avoid the lows, Yeah, but those two things come together. And, you know, even that you'll, you're walking in that space and you realize that you're not sovereign in your life. You're not mm. true to who you are in all ways. And we can ignore it. We do. We try. I've tried, Mm -hmm. you know, wine, Netflix, (laughs) busying myself, setting another goal, being dramatic. I mean, we all have different ways that we Mm. numb or distract ourselves from the truth of our life. But at some point it's going to bubble up and it's going to keep bubbling up. And, you know, you're going to have to work with it somehow. So it's just, it's that part where it's, it's, if you can really like, just realize these things are coming up for you, they're not to punish you. They're not to, you know, create shame or suffering, even though we can feel really, you know, intense emotions in, in that space, but you move through it when you avoid it, when you're always trying to avoid it, you spend mm-hmm. all your time in avoidance. Such a waste of are, energy. Such a waste of energy. And it, and she's coming for you. <laughs> She is going to come for you. She's coming for you. She's like pulling you in. She's like, sister, we got some work to do, you know, let's go. And you just try and you resist it and resist it. And then finally, I mean, I'm speaking from my own experience and, you know, what I hear with the women I work with, but there's a place in which you just kind of put it down and you're like, I'm here for the work. I'm going to, I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to face it. I'm going to have the conversation. I'm going to ask myself the questions I haven't asked myself. Mm. I'm going to be available. I'm going to be available for myself so that I can meet myself. Mm. And maybe it's in a way that you never have done before. So being available, what did that look like for you? Oh, it looked like a lot of, a lot less doing at that time. Right. Um, Because I was in that end of my thirties, beginning of my forties, I had busy kids, busy practice, you know, a lot going on in my life, Mm -hmm. which was all great. Uh, But I needed to pare it back. I needed Mm -hmm. to create some space between stimulus and response. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) And, and really I, I knew that the answers were inside of me. So I, Mm -hmm. I was already conscious enough to the fact that I, although I could ask for support and I could look for mentorship, asking other people how to find that way back to myself in the places I had left behind, because it wasn't Mm -hmm. all parts of my life. That was definitely an inside job. And so I really needed to create space and a lot of sitting in and being okay, or finding a way to be okay with listening to kind of the resonance of what was going on inside of me. Mm -hmm. And it, and it worked, you know, the longer that I had my own way of sitting in the stillness, which was if I look back now, lots of work got done in about a three or four month period, but really that stuck around for a couple of years. Really? Um, 
it stuck around in a way, right? Like mm. in the thread of it, the tone of it was there. I mean, it's still there. It's what I go back to on the daily, mm. right? That space, that peace, that place where I can tap in and tune in to what I know to be true, because I have now created a very, very strong connection with that inner part of me, mm -hmm. you know? So when I don't know, or when I feel overwhelmed or when I feel any of the things where uh, I'm not in the energy of myself, I, I immediately, I start saying no to some things. I clear my day. I create some space and I, I go back in, I tune back in. I ask myself the questions, whether it's journaling or, you know, laying down on the ground or walking on a trail or taking a trip around my yoga mat every day for a whole week, you know, just whatever it needs to be. But mm -hmm. that's, but that's the way I really was able to do that. And it's so funny because people are so scared of the space. Mm. Yeah. And spend so much time pushing it away, avoiding being in the stillness. Uh, maybe it's yeah. because, I don't know, do you think it's people are afraid of what they might find or there's no going so. back? <laughs> well, it's hard to unhear what you've heard. <laughs> <laughs> True. Right. Yes. It is. It is hard. Um, but I also think that society rewards the driven. And, oh, and so, yes. right. And it comes from this very patriarchal model and masculine energy of do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. And women are not inherently, we're not built on that same foundation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have rhythms, we have an internal pace, we have an ebb and a flow literally. And, yeah. you know, and when we sort of bypass that, which was something that I did for a long time, a lot of my mentors in life were, were men, which, you know, also have that masculine energy mm -hmm. and the female energy as well. But at the same time, it was the, it was the overdriven masculine energy that I was attuning to. And so I was just like, that's how they do it. That's how I'll do it. Although I don't remember mm -hmm. having that conversation with myself, that's what I did. <laughs> and, you know, I was even, I was in an accountability groups with men and, and none of that is bad. None of that no. is bad. But what I realized, again, in retrospect, is that even the women that I hung out with, the women that I found things in common with, they were also like that. It was built, you know, create a goal, work like hell, you know, achieve it or do your very best to do so. Just push and grind and accomplish, you know, it was that, mm -hmm. right? And it's not that I wasn't heart driven. It wasn't that I had my priorities mixed up. It was none of those things. It's just I didn't. I really didn't honor this wise feminine part of myself that was intuitive and nuanced and could really hear the message between the words and knew how to collectively bring people together. I let those things come through me, but I didn't embrace them. Mm -hmm. And that was probably, you know, that's the piece that I think as women, when we, you talk about why is it that we don't pause for that? It's, yeah. it's because I think that the messaging is all wrong. Mm. That's, right? That somehow, you know, to be a good mom or to be uh, a wonderful human or to strive or to make yourself of service in life is to go, to go, to go, yes. to go. Right. And so when do we ever say, you know, it's a treat to relax. It's a, you know, it's those kinds of things, as opposed to understand that we are built differently. Mm -hmm. We have a whole different mechanism inside of us. And that is what's amazing about us. Mm -hmm. That's not the thing we need to you know, make exception for that's the thing we need to embrace. That's the mm. part we need to embody. It's that one. It's that wise, that's that wise woman that just is inside of us. That is us. It's the essence of our soul. And it's all the women that came before us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think the the power that is within the feminine strength can be so misconstrued. And so mm -hmm. undervalued. And as soon as you say the word power, people think of it as a male energy and a might and right kind of thing. And actually, when you really look back and you think about when you've seen examples of powerful women or when you yourself dig in and you know that you drew on your power, it is a phenomenal energy. And I just don't think we give it enough credit. I think you bring up such an incredible point, Lindsay, because um, this comes up in the work that I do mm. all the time. And I mean, I'm 
it's going to air before this episode, but I just had this experience of naming a masterclass that I was doing, bringing a collective of women together to host a conversation. And then the name of the masterclass is embodying your inner wise woman warrior. And I got feedback from women about warrior. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, girlfriend, sit down. (laughs) Yes, for sure. Because if you don't think you have a warrior inside of you, you do. And just to be clear, a warrior doesn't need to be the woman that goes out and fight against in the world. Mm -hmm. She is the woman who stands and fights for herself, who knows who she is at the core of her her being, who has that sort of rooted foundational strength of character, Mm -hmm. who really just like uh, embraces all parts of herself and allows herself to be seen and heard and all these different aspects. So it is that it's standing in your personal power, but it doesn't, you don't need to be a blowhorn. You know, it's not about, you know, standing up and just, you know, being an obnoxious person. It is about that quiet, calm, strength of character, internal purpose, knowing who you are at the core of your being and allowing yourself to ripple out into the world in the way that suits you and your unique style so that you, so that you can stand in who you are and you can have your voice match what matters to you and how you want to be seen in the world. And you can tap into your purpose and you can live it in all the different ways. That's a warrior. Mm -hmm. You know, that's power. You know, it can be many things, right? But that's Mm. power. And you see it in other women. You know, when you meet another woman and she, she just has a way about her. Yes. Like it's, it's really a being, it's not really what she's doing so much. Mm. Her doing will usually match her being, but what you're really noticing is it's who she's being. Yeah. That's to me, personal power. Yeah. That's it, standing. It, in the- she exudes it. It's- she does. Yeah. It's really, um, it's, it's really attractive. Like not it, just attractive. It, so it, is. it is. And we love it. Don't we? Like when you yeah. meet somebody who just has that, that strength of who she is within her. And uh, to me, it's like a lighthouse, you know, yes. <laughs> when you think of a lighthouse, a lighthouse, just is there strong Mm -hmm. and bold doing her job, knowing who she is. She's not running around trying to like, look for the different things. She's just like, I'm over here doing my thing, lighting the way, being the brightest light I know how. And it's, and it's attractive. And I think when I see other women do that, I'm like, oh, that's it. That's how you do it. That feels, that's the kind of power. That's the, the strength of character. That's the warrior spirit that I want to embody. Yeah. Thanks for showing me how it's done. I get it now. That's yeah. Now I can I, do my version of it because that's what my makes version. you, you. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's it. The, what's your version, mm. you know, cause it, it's nice to see it in someone else, but if it doesn't fit who we are, then we need to make sure that we adapt it to us, our uniqueness, our yeah. energy, our way of being. Yeah. yeah. I love I that. mean, that's, I know that you hold retreats. um, And so I'd like to ask you about that as well, because I just think women together in a retreat, um, I mean, almost in community, although in retreat, the sort of the social norms, the social expectations are allowed to fall away a little more, Mm, a lot more. Um, (laughs) And I've probably experienced that sort of feminine strength and people really just knowing who they are and then being absolute role models for me as I've grown up. Mm. I've connected to that more with doing outdoor pursuits. And I don't know whether it's that, that earthiness, that fresh air, that sense of adventure. I don't know what it is, but to me, that's when you can really get such a powerful strength of when a woman really knows herself, knows who she is. Have you yeah. experienced that with your retreats? Or, I mean, oh, even with your, every your time. experiences? In my own retreats, in, my, in the retreats I've done with other, like as a participant, it is magic. Retreats mm. are magic. Um, and I'm not just talking about my retreats. I'm talking about when women, women retreat in general. Mm. And, and I've thought about this a lot, as you can well imagine, only because when you're trying to create it within the work that you do, you, you kind of look at it more granular wise. And I, 
the thing that I keep coming back to is it feels that it is, it starts with the ability to kind of step outside your everyday, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're in our everyday, we do get to be, you know, quite often we become human doings and, yeah. and then we just, we just get into the habits and we all do it just to varying degrees. But when you put yourself in a retreat and my favorite retreats are like between five and seven days long, mm -hmm. when you can do those kinds of retreats, you literally pick yourself up from your every day and you plop yourself in a new spot. And that alone puts you in a whole different energy. And, you know, when you're on retreat, you look after yourself or someone's helping look after mm. you, which is even more awesome, right? Mm. Someone's usually making the meals or that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, you get to wake up in the morning and you're like, you know, you know, even though there might be a program or there might be an agenda, it's like, what do I want to do today? What yeah. do I want to wear today? How do I want to show up today? And it's like, there just seems like there's so many more possibilities and you kind of just exhale in the whole process. Yeah. And, uh, and I also think we're just more willing to uh, be seen for who we really are, because quite often we don't know everybody in the retreat yes. or any, or anybody. And so, you know, it's not like you're going there and you're like, I'm going to be somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that you just, <laughs> but you go and you realize like, I'm just, there's, there's sort of an opportunity, a space or a portal that opens up where you can kind of just let go of the spoken and unspoken expectations. Yes. And you kind of just put it down and you show up. Usually your vibe's a lot lower. Yeah. Like from the perspective of like, you don't usually come in, you know, like all full of boisterous energy. There's usually just this, you know, trepidation at the beginning. You mm -hmm. don't know everybody. What's this going to be like? Am I going to like everyone? Where am I sleeping? Like whatever all those things are. But then you get there and, and I'm curious what your experience is around this. Then you get there and it just unfolds and yes. it unfolds and it unfolds. And when you leave, you can't even believe the, these, these relationships you've generally created with the other humans, the other women in the group. And you've seen a side of yourself. You've remembered something about yourself that you yes. have forgotten. It is a real coming home. It is. I, honestly, they are these last couple of years have been challenging mm -hmm. because I've had four retreats <laughs> wow. canceled, one in Mexico, one in Spain, one in Ontario, one in British Columbia. I'm feeling a little shell shocked, but I'm I like bet. the other day, the other day I felt this, I'm like, pull, I'm like, Oh, I feel a retreat bubbling up inside yes. me, but I, but I've been attending retreats over this time and it's been beautiful, fertile ground right now. Mm -hmm. And what about your experience? What's that like for you? Well, one of the funniest things, funny as in interesting, not funny, ha ha, although there was that too. Um, I, my mom came over from England and she came on a retreat with me for a weekend. And it was at a campground. So it was all, you know, everybody had mattresses on their camp beds and it was just like a, you know, a summer camp for kids. Amazing. My mom's, my mom's 80, right? <laughs> Go mom. <laughs> Go mom. She was an icon on this weekend. Oh my gosh. Because, and she'd never done anything like it. So oh, bless her. I know, absolutely bless her. Um, and my dad had died, um, I want to say a year before, maybe a year before. And she had so much unpacking to do. Mm. Oh, I'm going to get quite emotional actually. She was so held. Mm. by the women and it was almost like the womb space that was oh. so safe and to experience how she experienced it because she'd never had anything like that it's not very 80 year old it's not very British <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <laughs> to be able to do that in such a safe environment and I mean it, the funniest thing is you get what you need from the retreat she Always. was she was looking to learn <laughs> bless her heart <laughs> she was looking to learn how to knit on a round knitting needle oh my gosh that's and fantastic. there was somebody there knitting away on her round knitting needle so they sat and had dinner together while she taught her to <laughs> knit on the round knitting needle and I was like 
A, I'd never heard of a round knitting needle and B, who would go on retreat to learn that? <laughs> mom, your mom would. My mom did. Anyway, mm. so, and all the way back, she was just um, very reflective of it because she said, oh, so that's the sort of thing you do. What Interesting. A yeah, what a it gift. Was, such for, a gift for everyone for everyone because oh my gosh so much to unpack there but i, I just a couple of things that fly to mind right away is oh we do not revere elderly women elderly period but elderly women as much as we really ought to um because they're so wise yes. and usually they've gotten to that period of their life I don't know if you say the same for British women, but I will say my mom's in her eighties. There is kind of a, say it like it is that also starts to emerge. Um, and thankfully so in my mom's case, I love that because she didn't do that for, you know, 99% of her life. Yeah. And so let it out, girl, let it out. And in seeing that and, and witnessing it in other women, especially women who are older than us like that is just so heart heartwarming, yeah. heartwarming. It, it is, is so inspiring. You know, it's that back to that Brene Brown thing where it's like, we think when we're vulnerable that we're weak and then we, we see vulnerability and we are so amazed by the strength of it. Yeah. And then when it's time for us to be vulnerable, we think it's weakness again. It's like, can we just remember vulnerability so is strength? Yeah. We do. We do. And it's, and we see that. Uh, and I love that. And and also um, with, with what you're, with what you said there, which is you sign up for the retreat for the reason that you want to sign up, maybe to learn to knit with round knitting. Newton. <laughs> I don't even know what they're called, whatever. Exactly. I know. It. I know, right? What, what, whatever the reason was that you signed up and this is for life in general, you say yeah. yes to something because you have a reason. And then we just need to let it go after that. Yes because you will receive what you need to receive. It's like right now, I am receiving things all over the place right now. And I'm, I feel kind of like, okay, time out. I'm done receiving right now. <laughs> mm, yes. Like the world is like giving us messages right now. And it's, it's a marathon. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, I, fair I, won't enough. Pretend, I won't pretend that everyone's having the same experience, but it feels like a marathon, but that's it. You're there for the receiving it's there. And that's what, Oh, that is an amazing story. Thank you for sharing that with me. That's You're welcome. Really yeah. 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 What's your, uh, what's your mom's first name? Pat. Pat. Nicely done, Pat. Yes. So Pat actually was an inspiration to so many of the women there. And it was so funny because you're so used to um, almost wanting to be, you're seeing your kids shine and being proud of how your kids are growing up. Mm. And then to be there with your mum. And be so proud of how your mom is showing up. Yeah. It was a complete, you know, circle. It was. Um, and just, and just to see and to be reminded that that women are actually there for us. Yes. And so many of us have been raised believing we can't trust other women or or that, you know, female friendships are hard or difficult. And. And I, it's a lie. It's an illusion. And mm. if we can show up in the energy of who we are, women will meet you every single time. Yeah. Every single time. And that remembering when women come together in a collective, they remember who they are. And I, I think that now, because mm. if we're struggling right now, find, find some women, just put yourself in the presence of other women, whether it's a weekend retreat or, mm. you know, it's joining something. Maybe it is actually on zoom. I don't know, but you know, it is amazing. You start to, you create the connection with other women. You're like, ah, oh, right mm. there it is. Thank you for showing me. And, and it's, um, I don't know. It feels like magic to me. Oh, it really is. Absolutely. And so that leads very nicely into the nature of this podcast obviously is the magical midlife and yep. something that has been so incredible about it is how many incredibly inspiring women I've now connected with mm -hmm. as a result of people wanting to grasp these midlife years. I bet. And to say, we need to reprogram this. 
We need to reprogram how society sees midlife women and therefore reprogram our experience of midlife. Right. So how is, I mean, how does that play out for you? Have you noticed any difference with your social connection since you've come into midlife? Yeah, I'm 52 right now. Mm -hmm. And I would say, I don't know where midlife literally starts, but let's just say, you know, there is, there has been a shift for me resulting in a shift from the connections around me where I am much more willing to show up as I am. Yes. Right? And, and as a result, I'm meeting women who are showing up as they are. Mm. And I have more, like, I'm not looking for a football team, but I have more <laughs> female friendships based on, and there's that word, but it, like real authentic connection mm -hmm. um, than I ever have before in my whole life. Yeah. And it's because it is consciously important to me. It right. is consciously important to me. I just value and require these relationships. And some of the relationships I have, those women may not even know the extent to which I draw from them, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's interesting. We have all different kinds of relationships in our life. Some of them are like besties. And it's like, it's so like on the table, you know who, who you are for each other. And then other women, like you are across the Zoom room or you're across the country. <laughs> Here we are. Yep. And, and you are, and you have created a connection with them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I feel like. I feel like in my midlife, I am, I am seeing it for what it is. I'm seeing how women are really meant to be in community. Um, and I am wanting that. I am actively searching for that. I'm actively creating that. There isn't a part of me that doesn't, that doesn't feel nurtured by that. So mm -hmm. that's the difference for me. It's a great place to be, really. It really is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I men, think are, it's... men are great. Don't get me wrong, you know, but, oh man, I just missed out on so many years of not, um, not that I didn't have female friendships, but maybe, maybe it was the busyness who knows, but yeah, I just being in this place right now where it's actually high up on my values is mm -hmm. to create those kinds of relationships. And so, you know, my actions are aligned with that all day long, all day long. Yeah. And it's such a gift. So this is one of the questions that I always ask, but kind of tongue in cheek, because I sort of expect a certain answer, but we'll see. Okay. If you if you could go back to your old way of being, like early chiropractic life, mm -hmm. is there anything that you miss? Is there anything I missed? Like, no, anything you miss, as in from where you are now, is there anything you miss about that old life? Oh. Old life. Hmm. That's an, that's a really cool question. <laughs> I mean, kind of my vain self would say I would like better skin. <laughs> do you know what? <laughs> that's the only thing everybody says is something to do with appearance. It's like, oh, I wish my butt was smaller or I wish <laughs> I didn't have a midlife tummy or. <laughs> oh gosh. But you yeah. know what I will say? I do love myself, you know, even though the standard is different, it, I have so much more love for this version of me. I don't miss, I, you know, there isn't much I miss. I, I wish I had had the wisdom I have now then, of course, you know, yeah. but that isn't really what you're asking. Um, I wish in some ways I wish I had the energy. Yes. That's another even, thing you, people say. I don't even know if I mean that actually. I, I'm that I'm one of those people that sort of, as I go forward in life, I have, I look back for wisdom, but I don't tend to look back too much for nostalgia and mm -hmm. I'm not big on regret. So that's a, that's a tricky question for me to answer because every time I go to answer my bias, but I don't actually regret that. So, yeah. or I, or I wouldn't want that again, or it's all the way it's supposed to be. It always is, you know, even when you feel like you're eating a shit sandwich, it's still the way it's supposed to be. And yep. so, yeah, I, I could do with a few less wrinkles. How about that? <laughs> Fair enough. There you go. And you know what, if you've got this far and that's the only thing that you miss about looking back. Mm. Well, quite frankly, what a beautiful gift of a place to be in. Yeah, it's true. It is true. I, I mean, blessed, right? Even in yeah. the things that don't always feel so great. 
for the most part, when I'm like an eagle and I kind of can just come up above it all, I'm like, you may want something more different, Mm -hmm. more designed for you. Don't stop wanting, don't stop, you know, walking forward in your life. But at the same time, you know, also find that place where we feel blessed for what we have, right? Just be blessed with what we have. That's right now. I feel a lot of that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I think that's a very natural coming up to the end of the conversation. What I would love to do though, Laura, is how can people find you? Because everything that you shared today, I mean, for goodness sakes, people are going to want to know more. How do they find you? (laughs) (laughs) Probably the easiest place to find me is on my website. So my website is soul inspired girl. That's Mm -hmm. G U R L. Um, soulinspiredgirl.com. Everything that I have is named that. My podcast is Soul Inspired Girl. My Instagram is Soul Inspired Girl. Everything about what I do, you can find on my website. Um, you can find, I co-authored a book called Whispers that's coming out this spring. As, as we talked about, my podcast is new, but awesome. Such incredible women on the podcast. Uh, and I have a program called Roots in the Sisterhood, which is going to be opening up to spring registration right about the time that this podcast comes out. So cool. March 23rd to March 29th, Roots in the Sisterhood will be open for registration. It's a 10-week awesome deep dive into the relationship with yourself to really talk about the things that we talked about, being that lighthouse for who you are, knowing who you are at the core of your being so that you can root into it and rise the way mm-hmm. you are intended to as the woman that you are. So yes, that's how you can get a hold of me. Fantastic. Okay. So please go and connect with Laura, go and look at the program. And I think that today has been an absolute blessing of a conversation. Thank you so much. It has been all my pleasure. I'm so grateful to be holding this space with you. Thanks for ha- having me. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you've enjoyed the conversation, please come and leave a review. If you go to the Apple Podcasts app and scroll down to the bottom of the podcast page, and then you'll find the ratings and review section. Please invite your friends to come and listen by sharing the link. And you can join the conversation and let me know who you'd like to hear interviewed and what topics you'd like discussed over at Facebook on the Magical Midlife group. You can also find me on Instagram at Lindsay DeSwart, where the conversation will also continue. I can't wait to see you on the next episode. And once again, keep living your magical midlife.